<laughs> notice, notice what's happening here. The bullet is actually reflecting and refracting through the glass. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Completely amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of anger. That's a lot of anger. He's, he's been up all night. He's been up all night. Let's give him another round of applause, shall we? Thank you. Well, that's, some, that's something, but let's, let's kick it up a notch. Because we're finally able, with Kepler's GPU, do, real tra do ray tracing in real time. And so notice the ooh-ah moment. Yes. <laughs> there's one person who really appreciates ray tracing. <laughs> now there's there's a whole bunch of us that looks at this and go, wow, that's really hard. Look at that. And so you could see the the um, uh, the claw, our logo. Of course, you could see very clearly. You could see it reflected on the cylinder, uh, not the cylinder, but the sphere. You could also see our claw reflecting off the sphere, but you could also see the sphere reflecting off the claw off the sphere. Okay. Notice that the glass case, the glass box is um, uh, not just a piece of plastic, it's actually not just a, 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 a translucent polygon, it's actually the modeling of a piece of glass. So notice that it's reflecting and notice the edges of, of the box is um, all ray traced. There's actually real geometry there, there's real glass. It looks like real glass. Well that's all very cool but let's kick it up a notch, shall we? We know that ray tracing is hard. We know that fluid simulation is incredibly hard. What if we did ray tracing and fluid simulation at the same time and ray trace the fluids? Let's go completely crazy, shall we? All right, Jim, let's see it. Whoa. The reflection and the refraction and the Fresnel effect of the water is just beautiful. You can just sit here and watch this all day. <laughs> just the stress just flows right out of my fingertips. <laughs> this is going to be a good day. I am going to do a good job. Okay, that's fantastic. Let's give these guys a round of applause. Thank you very much. As you can see, as you can see, GTC is not only about science, GTC is about stunt. Kepler is just the beginning of it. You can see that in several years, computer graphics will look nothing like the chalk, chalky, computer shaded, easy, easily shaded looks that we see in game console and video games today. This is the way that next generation computer graphics will look. Computer graphics, the first element of Kepler's influence. Now, of course, we understand that computer graphics is vital to the work that we do together here. It's vital even to GPU computing, and the reason for that is because the computer graphics industry is so large. The video game industry is so large. There are hundreds of millions of gamers around the world. The video game industry is tens of billions of dollars large. As a result, is able to fund enormous advancements. If we can harness that basic architecture and leverage it for general purpose computing, it is unbelievable how much R&D we can bring to bear. We can also, of course, make this technology highly pervasive so that everyone here in the audience, any of the scientists around the world, can easily reach out and grab a supercomputer in their hands. Kepler is a big deal for computer graphics, but Kepler is a bigger deal for high-performance computing. Today I'd like to announce the other persona of Kepler. Kepler is going to be the most energy-efficient and the highest-performance HPC accelerator. <laughs>